Hello, this is, oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, this is Pigsy. Oh, you should be able to get by. Scare a learner. Right, um, yeah, interesting. Just having a quick thought about, um, there we go, that's nicer. Um, and it's getting, getting sorted out for Christmas. I think I've been a bit more optimistic about things. And I understand now, a greater understanding, a spiritual understanding, that pain is opportunity for growth. And um, there's a thing in like pain is power because you push yourself through it to endure it. But I've realised when it comes to the heart, the heart in essence is like a plant. And you see a lot of the plants' seeds with they are heart shaped. And then what happens if you have a bad experience? I guess it's the same for neurons, we're coming to this in a bit, is that it's a kind of pruning or a shrinking. And um, so you go through some discomfort. Now you only feel it while you allow it to happen. When you start taking active ste steps for, you'd think would be recovery, but it's actually growth. You want to sort of regrow yourself emotionally and spiritually. And um, I think that's the main thing. Once you accept that, it's a, it's a time for growth, a time for expansion, self-improvement. You start to realise that maybe you just kind of fell into some situation without really, because you wasn't um, doing anything. So you've entered into some sort of trauma, whatever it is. I mean, they, the, the Buddhist saying is that you kind of, um, you kind of choose at some level your own suffering. Um, you can't. Well, yeah, I guess the karma, there's a certain amount of karma, so it kind of happens and, you know, you, you, it's a part of your lessons in life, the learning, the learning of life. So, um, yeah, treat, treat the heart as a flower or a plant, and if you go for anything that's negative, it's kind of pruning, emotionally you might prune yourself in some way, and then the, the, uh, the goal is that you want to grow in a certain direction. You know, people have to make decisions, say for instance, if you're going into a certain college or a degree, and you might have to disconnect yourself from your friend's network, and then go somewhere else and start again. And so, in essence, you have to set yourself up, so you're keeping contact at some level, but you're pulling away, and you're adjusting yourself, and you're reducing that um, connection. So you need to sort of discipline yourself, so that there's no, there's no desire or need to pull you back in. And I think that's the main thing. So I was just having a chat with um, a female friend of mine. I think that was the um, realization. Because people always talk about things like, um, you know, if you go for any trauma, it's a, a break and it doesn't heal and these things are. I think that's the kind of belief. Your belief structure in place will hold you back in, in how you develop. But you must use your time and you must put it into some proactive development. Otherwise, it won't heal on its own because all you've got is a kind of cycle of reflecting back on yourself and stuff. And um, you need to be forging new memories, you need to be creating something so that thereby, when you look at it, you can say, you know, as a result of this, this is where I went. You know, I got a new job, I got a new degree, I got, you know, I met, made new friends. Set yourself goals, small steps, not big steps. You can, if you try a big step, it might. Either it work in your favour or, it, or it'll go terribly wrong. You know, like if you've rebounded, you met somebody at a club, you, you say you slept with them or something happened, and then you thought you wanted to have a full-blown relationship with them and they weren't interested. You might feel like used and quite low in yourself, and then you'd probably be like, you'd be put off, basically, depending on how you think. But you might think, oh, I can't even trust myself now. So, um, that wouldn't be a growth, that would be kind of like trying to air out feelings or readjust and you're doing it by forcing yourself into another situation, which is probably not really positive. Um, so if there's anything else I'm thinking of, oh yeah, I might as well throw some. I, I think uh, I come across somebody, he mentioned about some of his alien experiences and a lot of them seem in that kind of realm of, of you know, often Christians say, oh, they're demons, they're, you know, somebody might say they're fallen angels. They could be all of these things, you know, cause unless they actually tell you what they are, you can't really put a label on them directly. But they do fall into a sort of paranormal type um, behaviour, you know, things that can walk through walls or things that turn up when you're half asleep. Because your mind's in a certain frequency, they sort of lock onto it. 
Um, I've always turned conscious thoughts, it never happens. You never see the see an alien, you never sort of have any sort of feelings around them. You know, the last thing in your brain. But then suddenly, people who don't believe in them have an experience and they go, whoa, there's something here, this doesn't quite make sense. And that sets it apart, really. So I think you can possibly, through meditation and other means, make contact. Um, so you may be, you may focus on something, you may try to use your energy to reach out to something, you may focus your mind as the universe. People will say you need certain spiritual protection, and I think you need to be the right, right frame of mind. If you go looking in dark places, you'll find dark things, that's basically it. And um, you just need to have a way to close yourself down from the experience afterwards. And, um, but they may take an interest in you, but if it doesn't freak you out, it's fine. To be honest, they can't do anything. They, you know, I, I, we do hear about people, people getting abducted and stuff like that, but I don't know if that's the same type of, you know, travelling in spirit, is it, and, um, or having something that's, that's got an ethereal, ethereal form, <laughs> that's what I think about to say that, um, but it, if it's, if it's at a different frequency of dimension, then it's not going to be, um, I mean, it's hard, it's unlikely to cause you any harm, and, um, you know, if you've never had experience of harm from something that's a ghost or something like that, then, you basically got to base it on evidence. You don't get people saying I got slashed and tapped by something interdimensional. More that they got scared of it and felt that it was messing with their head and stuff. That's really where they're at. And some of it's some of themselves where they projected their fears into these things. And maybe they're thinking, well, look, this, this, this being's frightened of me. He's given up all this energy. So what happens if I pursue this and find out what, what's it all about? I don't understand why he's acting in a particular way. So you're kind of feeding into their 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 existence because it may be they use it, use certain types of energy, but most of them just seem nosy or they're interested in because they don't have the same experiences as we do when you're in this this um, when you're in this light body. You have quite unique experiences, and I think you've got a, a whole array of emotional spectrum. You know, you've got all these you've got all these chakras and. You've got lots of things there, maybe that they don't have. You know, what you're looking at is their body. That's as advanced as they are in a different frequency. That might be in some other universe or it's just some sort of other simulation. And they, they've reached their pinnacle point in that they can astral travel and see other civilizations and learn, learn from them. That's what they're doing. They're gaining memories, learning. I mean, what, if, they're, if they're out to get DNA, it's maybe so they can construct something similar on their own world. There must be a builders. There must be some type of builder race, and maybe that's what their, their project was. They said, "Oh, could we, could we enter a different dimension and build our own universe?" And maybe they got granted that. Maybe there was some higher, higher force that said, "Yeah, that's fine. You can run our simulations, and you know, because it's, it's kind of um, a constant progression of learning, a learning curve." So yeah, definitely interesting stuff. Anyway, it's a big to sign off. Have a great Christmas if I don't speak to you soon and yeah just have a generally good one if you're not so there we go bye bye